here are the questions that I'm going to be doing today. The first thing I should point out is that the functions that we're going to be looking at have two and three variables. So if you're in high school and you're still at the stage where you're looking at functions like fx equals x squared, that is functions of one variable, then this is probably not the, the video for you. The second thing is, uh, often when people explain this, they rush to put pretty 3D graphs up on a screen. Um, I'm not going to do that. I, I think it's better to uh, take a more basic approach. But having said that, I just want you to know, before there are any comments, that I can draw pretty 3D graphs. So here's a few of them for you to have a look at. Anyway, let's, let's start now. In this first question, we input xy and fxy outputs the sum of the square of the two numbers. So if we have the an empty chart here, and we, we could start writing down the numbers that corresponding to the value of f at various points. So for example, we could put here, well, we've got x equals 1, y equals 0, so that the fxy would be 1 here, be 1 here, 1 somewhere around here. There'd be quite a few places where it equals 1, and similarly there'd be places where it equals other values that I've written here. What we can then do is join up all the, uh, where all the values are the same with a line. So we can see here this innermost circle uh, would be all the value, all the places where fxy equals 2, and the next one is all the places where fxy equals 4, etc. This is a contour diagram of fxy. So if we now go to part A, it asks us to find this sort of upside down triangle F. Well, that's the gradient of F, or sometimes also called grad F. So grad F takes a function and it outputs a vector field. By that, mean, by that I mean that every point on the xy plane has associated to it a vector from this function. So it could be a vector here or there or there, whatever. Every point has a vector. So they're not allocated randomly like I've done here. There's some method to the madness. So how, how does this work? Well, uh, the, f the first thing is the direction of the vector. So if we have a point up here, the direction of the vector is always the, uh, the highest slope. I suppose that's where we get that name gradient. So we always have the vector in the direction of the highest gradient or highest slope from that point. And it's pretty clear from this point here that the, the, the highest slope or highest gradient is if we head to the next gradient, the next out, outermost, sorry, contour, the next outermost contour in a straight line. So the uh, direction of the vector will be this way here. Uh, the next thing is the length of the vector, and the length of the vector is equal to the, the slope at that point, heading in that direction. So that's what grad f is. How do we actually work it out? Well, it's just the, we take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, and that goes in front of the unit vector in the x direction, which we call i, and then we add to it the partial derivative of f with respect to y in the y direction. And there we use the, the unit vector in the y direction is j. So that enables us to work out the vector, and that would be the answer to problem a. Question B asks us to work out the gradient of f at the point negative 1, 1. And this is very easy once we've done part A, because in part A we worked out a formula essentially for the gradient at any point. So all we're going to do is say that the gradient of f at the point negative 1, 1 is equal to 2 times negative 1 times i plus 2 times 1 times the vector j. And that just gives us negative 2i plus 2j. So to go back to what I said before, we can now label this point on the graph negative 1, 1, and this is telling us that the direction that we need to go for the highest derivative of highest slope or highest gradient is out this way in the direction negative 2, 2, 
And it also tells us that the derivative at this point, negative 1, 1, going in this direction will be the length of this vector, negative 2, 2, which is the square root of 8. And then we go to question C. Now, the derivative we just worked out of, of, of at the point negative 1, 1, as we go off this way, maximum direction is uh, the square root of 8. We know that if we head off this way, because we're going along the contour, well, the derivative is going to be 0. This is asking us for the derivative in this direction here. And obviously, this derivative in this direction doesn't depend on the length of this vector, negative 3, 4. And so we're going to use the unit vector to work this out. And this is very well suited to the dot product uh, to work out what, what this should be. And in fact, that is the way you work out the directional derivative. So the derivative at the point negative 1, 1 in the direction of negative 3, 4 is, well, we take the negative 2i plus 2j, and we take the dot product with the unit vector in the direction negative 3, 4. Now, this vector negative 3, 4 has length 5, so the unit vector will be 1 fifth of negative 3i plus 4j. And when we work all of that out, which I've got here somewhere, uh, it turns out to be 14 on 5, or 2.8, which is just less than um, the square root of 8 which we worked out in um, part B, which is what you would expect, that it should be close to, but less than the answer in B. In this second question, we have a function of three variables, and we need to find the gradient of the function. Now, in this case, we're going to have um, three unit vectors, which I've labeled i, j, and k, in the direction of x, y, and z, respectively. And we follow the same sort of idea. So the gradient of the function is equal to the partial derivative of the function with respect to x times i plus the partial derivative with respect to y times j plus the partial derivative with respect to z times k. And you can see all the calculations there. That's it for gradient of a function made easy. I hope you found it useful.